Okay. Uh, it's nice to be here. Mikael Epling is my name, uh, working as a commercial product manager for uh, Telia company with uh, 5G at this time, but in general with mo mobile data on the B2B segment. Uh, I was asked to come here to talk about uh, industrial digitalization with 5G and I will give you a smooth way about how we see uh, 5G coming and that's also part of my uh, uh, job to commercialize the 5G in the telecom, telecom company. Uh, one slide about telecom I, I guess most of you know it. Uh, we are the leading operator in the Nordics and Baltics. It started in 1853. That was way before me, but I think that was a good start anyway. Uh, the turnover and net sales is 80 billion sec. We are around 20,000 employees and we are the new telco. And I will tell you how we do that. Uh, the 5G uh, is, as we see it, uh, it's kind of a game changer for industry digitalization and also consumer experience. Uh, we used to describe it in four different pieces, but you can have, of, of course, many more. But one is the immersive experience with the uh, augmented reality and, and things that you can do with more uh, information for your, uh, for your mind. Uh, and the uh, similarity I used to say is that you have, most of you maybe have tried those kind of Googles, but then you have a very th 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 thick uh, cable into a PC close to you. But if you cut that uh, and think that you are completely mobile with that kind of uh, uh, service, then you can do a lot more. And it's both in the uh, health uh, area, but also in the industrial area. Another area uh, where we see a big changer is in the industry 4.0. And I will deep dive into that later on in this presentation. 5G, I mean, from Telia company point of view, we, we see it mainly to start actually in the business to business area. But of course, the consumer uh, demands and consumer experience will also drive this. And I think eSport is one of these uh, areas where we see 5G could actually uh, make uh, things more uh, attractive. And also urbanization is one other thing that we see. And that is one thing that we have the urbanization. We need to have more and more capacity in the same area, in the same spot, in a sub subway or something. But also, I used to take that also in an un industrial point of view. If you have a lot of machines in the same place, there's a huge demand for a lot of capacity in the wireless communication and connected devices. And all in all, this creates new business models and also new technology solutions. And we are about to find which of these would be the ones uh, to use and also what kind of technical solutions is, uh, is, there, going to, is there going to be actually. Uh, depending on the audience, uh, I think some technical details would be on place. 5G, it's kind of a new mobile network to enrich the businesses and the consumer experience. And uh, if we're gonna present it in different ways, you have the speed that will be around 1 to 20 gigabits, depending on the network capacities. And then the capacity itself, it's going to be very, uh, it will be possible to have very much capacity in a, on a square meter. So that is important for when you're dealing with uh, some kind of uh, implementations in an, in an industry, for example. And I think the real time, to make it real time, is really where 5G is going to do some changes in the connected area for com communications. The 4G is in the best way the LTE or 4G networks could come down to maybe 15 milliseconds. But when we enter into 5G, we're going to make it real time. So the things that you can do on a PC or a fiber, that is actually what you can do in a mobile environment in a 5G network. Uh, increased reliability is also one thing that they're uh, coming with this and uh, and also talking about this earlier the sensors and the energy efficiency will also be much more uh, better with the 5g sensors and increased security it's also th uh, the fundamental parts that will come with the 5g network architecture uh, and the thing i used to bring up here is the network slicing 
where you actually can from the radio access network into the core and to back to your own intranet you can have actually a, a specific slice a part of the network for a specific service a specific company a specific uh, category of services for example uh, the blue light uh, organizations in Sweden could be actually one part of such a slide so that you are completely uh, separated for all other traffic and you know what kind of capacity you have all over uh, the area. Uh, I assumed on this slide there used to be questions okay what about the frequencies and I just uh, added here uh, the, ba the, the two different frequencies that are presented and planned for 5G in Sweden and in the European Union is three and a half gigahertz and also 26 to 28 gigahertz. Uh, for those of you familiar with frequency, uh, this is higher than the 4G networks as today. The 4G networks are on 800, 1800 and 2600 uh, megahertz. So this will be uh, more capacity but the we need to build it more uh, with more uh, radio uh, radios in the network in order to feel or create the capacity and the coverage actually uh, and there might be also other alternative in order to build a kind of a 5g for for uh, outside in the country i should say uh, the 26 to 28 gigahertz is mainly going to be used for, as, as we see it, for industrial implementations where you have very small areas where you would like to have a very extreme uh, mobile experience in a factory in a specified area. A and one thing of this when we have done the test is it's the coverage is quite good actually, but the thing is that these kind of materials could actually stop the coverage, so you have no coverage. So it's very important that you have a free line of sight, so you have to build it in another uh, way. Mm. Based on this, we have kind of struggling during the last two years actually to see what is the 5G business opportunity space. What would we do, what would we do without this? And Adding this into it, it's kind of this is the Telia Mobile 5G business opportunity space. And in the upper part, you have kind of the strengthen of the existing businesses where you have the kind of, if you see this as a triangle, you have the enhanced your gigabit speed and the huge capacity on that side. Where there we have the kind of advanced mobile broadband. And where you can have the gigabits in a second with everything you can do today. And then you have the 360 live video or 4K or 8K video streaming. And also we see a uh, opportunity on a fixed wireless access, actually to have uh, on places where you don't have fiber today, we see that we could actually have a very good uh, connection with 5G to a specific area. So, so that is uh, also a thing. But I think where we put mess most of our experience and, and focus, that is on these two parts of the triangle high density and low energy here is where we have both the smart society applications and also the smart factories uh, and I, I should say also that this is from a from our point of view it's an evolution for 4g narrowband iog iot on the 4g networks and then put it into 5g context so it's kind of an evolution this day this could this can and are happening actually also today I should say we mo put most of our efforts on this side actually with the low latency and the high reliability and where we have the autonomous vehicles, remote control of machinery, e-health and also augmented and virtual reality. That is actually where we have the discussions and most of the focus actually right now to understand how could we enhance our uh, businesses actually. and, and meet and have continuous discussions with organizations, universities and companies actually in this area. And that's driven by the low latency and the high reliability, as I said. And all in all, you have the network slicing, which actually 
is the way forward when when you would like to have a specified quality of service on the connectivity in the mobile environment so, so all in all this is the, the uh, opportunity space you can all of, all of course add even more uh, application in this but we think that based on this we see uh, quite some new areas coming up both from uh, 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 on the smart society and smart factory as well as on the remote control of machinery and I should say based on the discussions we've had I've been in many areas actually in the mining industry is really uh, driving this forward in the remote control of machinery actually we've been in a cooperation with Bo Leiden, ABB, Volvo uh, construction equipment where we have actually started up uh, with the remote control of uh, machinery and so, so the mining industry and actually also the process industry are really driving this forward in order to find new ways to make things better, more cost efficient, etc. Et and then it's really amazing to see the, the driving force in the, I mean, it's an on, ongoing process in the, all of these companies. And now we kind of adding a new possibility and it's a really impressive uh, journey that we started I should say. Uh, the 5G in itself is started in 2016 where we have the first test beds for outdoor usage. Uh, in 2018 as we are out now we have trials uh, all over the world and also in Telia and we can clearly see that there's a lot of customer attention uh, in the market and also initial engagement for for different places. 2019 we, we believe that there will be commercial preparations, there will be some partnering, there will be some early setups for 5G networks within the Nordic area and 2020 is uh, when we actually could do a commercial availability. It's depending of course of the technology from a network point of view but also on the terminals and uh, the, the process actually in Sweden that are making us going for 2020, that is also the regulations for the uh, frequencies. The, so the national uh, frequency auction will be held in 2019 and the frequencies will be uh, available from 2020. That will actually happen 2019. So t we will start actually some commercial uh, launches actually I believe earlier on the Finnish market than the Swedish but in general the use cases and the applications the, the customer value will actually come is ex, uh, I should say it's kind of the same uh, um, talking a little bit about 5G ex businesses we we're kind of working in this kind of uh, vertical perspective and what we can see is actually that Manufacturing, automotive, process industry, mining and also utilities is actually the ones, the, the verticals and the segments where we think that the first 5G setups will actually come. So it's a very B2B driven launch from 5G. You have the traditional connectivity on the other side with the fixed wireless access the consumer enhanced mobile broadband etc that will al al always come but I think from a from a launch perspective and a co commercialization we think actually that uh, it's an industry driven launch and that is actually how we're going to do it we're going to focus very much on the customer driven uh, needs for 5G so, so it's will, it will not be like the 4G where we put up 4G on the uh, Stockholm area and, and just sold some uh, LTE modems. So this is going to be much more specific where we have a specific user case, a, a specific cooperation of companies want to uh, experience something or actually solve a problem. That is where we're going to put the effort for 5G in the first phase. And like a cliffhanger, with that said, I mean, we don't know, of course, in Telia, who is going to use it and what it's going to be used for. But what we see is that we're starting a journey towards 5G and we've also launched a journey to 5G partner program where we invite companies, uh, academia, 
uh, and cu our customers actually to be part of this kind of partner program to start the ecosystem for 5G. Uh, I mean, that's that's basically my job to really start the commercialization of 5G and how do we do that in the best way? Yeah, we do it together with those who have a, a great agenda for the digitalization. So we started this journey to 5G partner program where we will try to enable business development and use cases and also customer IDs. This is the phase where you can have the possibility together with Telia to create insights, test your own services, try to start the journey on yourselves and, uh, and on both products and, and on the public area. And the other thing is to enable the technical development within the dedicated networks. Uh, and, and this will be kind of coordinated on a commercial terms. And, and the purpose of this and the, our gain or goal is that Telia, our partners and customers can prepare for earlier deployments, launches and also implementations. So that is the baseline. So this is something that you could uh, bring bring back home and see how you would would be able to participate. Actually, uh, we have actually two two ways of participating in, in this: is the open environment, uh, where we see that we will have some cooperations with some universities and kind of open areas where uh, small smaller businesses, researcher students could be able to to facili facilitate to make use of a 5G network. We have the 5G terminals, etc., available. And the other thing is the customer-driven environment where we see that we go together with some companies actually to build the 5G networks to use or to solve their customer, uh, customer needs actually. Uh, so, th so we are building it in two ways in order to, to, to really try to make it possible to gain from 5G uh, before it's launched, actually. Uh, and this is kind of the public uh, development uh, cases we have on the table right now. I mentioned the Boliden case in the mine in Kankberg. We have also uh, communicated that we're going to build a 5G site on uh, KTH, actually. So that's one, that's the first open environment. And then we have the customer driven environment uh, with Volvo construction equipment, which uh, actually on the Volvo construction equipment, they will try to use both 4G and 5G for the remote control of machinery. So it will be both on the test track and on their customer center for demonstration for their customers and future, future customers. Uh, looking at the watch, yeah, control. Um, so, so what I would like to say is that this is actually it's all about partnerships and efficient corporations. We try to make this uh, happen earlier here in Sweden. We try to do it in this kind of partner program. We have a team uh, in Telia, which actually driving this and we are working together with Ericsson with our first 5G deployments. But what I can say is that we think that we believe that the, cost, the, the journey to 5G will be very much based on the user needs and the customer cases or user cases. So. Uh, we actually uh, invite you all to take part of this partner program uh, and there will be more launches of these uh, open environments. Uh, we just have to close the deals, so to speak. Um, thanks. Questions? <laughs> so if you have some more questions afterwards, so you can find me on LinkedIn or you have the email or phone here. So, any questions, comments, ideas? <laughs> yeah, hopefully, I mean, we're aiming to get one of these open. Yes, we have that kind of partnerships yeah. uh, between Telia and Mid Sweden University. And <laughs> we can also say that this presentation is going to be held in held in Swedish also afterwards. It's possible. <laughs> 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 yes, two questions. Do you see any? What, what kind of challenges do you see with the, the higher band, the higher frequency band, other than the fact that uh, one of these posters can stop the signal? Yeah, um, 
I, I should say that at, at the time being, we are actually working mainly with the 3.5 gigahertz and, and try to use that and understand what is actually the coverage. So, so when we're deploying this on the KTH and on and Volvo, we need, really need to understand. I mean, we have had Ericsson doing some kind of research ideas on what is the coverage area and how we're going to deploy such a, a network actually to, to gain all these capabilities that we're saying. So to be honest, I should say we at this time we need to verify that actually the PowerPoints is actually going to be delivered in, in the reality. So we haven't been, I, I have no, not that much information on the 26th to 28th, but the, the purpose of that band is that we're going to have very much more bandwidth within the 26th to 28th. So if you want to gain the 20 gigabits per second and, and actually have a really uh, high capacity area, I think that you will, we will need to use the 26 to 28. But I have no experience and from the early, early deployments, we haven't been using that actually. So please come back later. <laughs> Someone more? I have just a curiosity. Yeah. Uh, regarding the frequency, the use of an higher frequency. Sorry. Uh, the use of an uh, higher frequency, yeah. like three point five gigahertz, is more, let me say, healthy with respect to the four G. Is this one of the reason why the all the telecommunication company are pushing to this technology or? Now, uh, I'm not a radio, thank yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm not a radio, I should first say I'm not more on a commercial and business guy in this area. <laughs> but, but I should say that uh, the, freq the frequency spectrum is kind of used. So we have this 700 for aerial uh, telephony or, or uh, uh, TV, television, etc. So uh, the, the e easiest answer, I guess, is that we need to get higher in order to have a more area or a frequency space to use for for the next phase we're trying to uh, on the long term uh, reuse uh, other ex uh, frequencies so i think that uh, for example the umts 2100 megahertz which is used for 3g today that will be kind of reused when that auction is and and the frequency time is actually out so we will try to reuse that but that needs to be also handled on a kind of a European level so that we can have, uh, I shouldn't say cheap, but affordable uh, terminals actually, so that we have a uh, standardized uh, delivery of the terminals. So, so I think the easiest answer is we need to use spectrum that is available. That's a natural resource actually. That's a struggle actually. Thank you. More questions? The last one goes to... <laughs> Now, if not, okay. I want to thank Mikael yes. for coming here. Thank you.